I know this is not news to most of you who've been watching YouTube reviews for fragrances for any period of time, but reviewers like me, we get a lot of fragrances sent to us as PR, as gifts, as whatever it may be from brands. We collaborate with brands. Again, this is nothing new. And some of you guys might be put off by that. You might be like, well, it's so easy to talk highly or to talk favorably about something you didn't have to pay for. And you know what? You are absolutely right. It is very easy to do that. And I've been doing this for almost eight years now, and that's something I've had to learn. I've had to learn how to still be myself, how to still provide value, still provide unbiased information, even though I'm receiving fragrances for free. So I'm just saying all that to remind you that when you see reviewers talking about all these niche fragrances that they got from brands and stuff, look, there's so much here. It gets very overwhelming. As you can see, I'm overdue for a cleanup here. But when you see us talking about fragrances that we receive for free, just remember that this is a slice of fantasy. This is is not complete reality, especially you as a consumer. You have no business and no need to own this many fragrances unless you plan on starting a YouTube channel or a blog or something. The niche world of fragrance can be presented in a very overwhelming way because of how much you are exposed to. And this video is simply meant to add a little bit of clarity, add a little bit of guidance to those of you who might still be fairly new to niche. You're looking for something to get your toes wet. You're looking for higher quality. You're looking for a, a more unique experience in the way niche can provide, but you don't know where to start. You know what I'm actually gonna do? I'm gonna switch over to the real setup and continue this talk face to face. One sec. Hey there. I did a video like this a few years ago and it was aimed at the beginner. It had some niche picks that are great niche picks. Some of them I still recommend today. Some of them are very, very well known in the fragrance community so much that they're almost mainstream at this point, but nothing wrong with that. But sticking to that premise, I'm gonna talk about 10 fragrances in this video that I deem relatively unique smelling. They have a special quality to them. Their blends are just beautiful. You can tell that they're made of high grade ingredients. However, they are accessible. You're not gonna really have rough edges to them. They're not going to be overly polarizing or going to be very divisive. Most people who smell these fragrances, either wearing them themselves or smelling them around in the air, are going to enjoy these scents. There are many other fragrances I could have chosen for this list. It is a little bit arbitrary, but these 10 just happen to fit the criteria that I kind of came up with a few minutes before hitting record. So let's dive right into it. It's funny. Between that last segment you saw and this segment, it's been like an hour and a half, maybe more. I had to go run out and teach some trumpet, but with movie magic, it was just mere seconds for you. But in the meantime, I've been living life on this side of the camera. One thing I did want to say, yes, the title is a little bit provocative. Niche fragrances you must have in your collection. I hope you know that no, there is not a single must have fragrance out there. The only fragrances that you should have in your collection are the ones that you've tried and really enjoyed. I'm going to share with you guys what I am enjoying and that's it. The title is for the algorithm. This is how I grow my YouTube channel. I hope you understand that, but I'm still giving you guys some value because I got 10 great fragrances. No particular order. This is called Sartorial from the House of Penhaligans. This is a beautiful fougere. I think a fougere is a type of fragrance that I think you should try during your time as a fragrance aficionado, enthusiast, whatever you want to call it. You got to try fougeres. Now, you may not truly appreciate them at first, or you might. For me, they were a love at first sniff. My first fougere I ever really tried was at the Barber's from Margiela. Have that, love it. And I've branched out and gotten many since then, including including this one. And I would call this a pretty accessible fougere. It is one that is easy to approach if you've never approached the genre, but it is still a pretty definitive one. Margelle at the Barber's is also a great one for the beginner, but it's actually kind of hard to find these days. I think it's discontinued, so it is what it is. But this is still out there. This brings the soapy, clean quality of the fougere, that almost like shaving cream vibe. Lots of lavender in here that creates that vibe with some spices and some citruses. But in this case, we have this addition of a honey note or some kind of honeycomb or beeswax feel that kind of smells the way it looks. It brings this richer, almost syrupy sweetness, but it's very much inside of the cleanliness. So don't get me wrong. This doesn't smell like honey. It doesn't smell like a gourmand. It is very much a fougere. And there's also this interesting metallic like freshness. I think it's supposed to represent like an iron pressed shirt, like a tailor shop or something of that nature. It is a very unique take on the genre. But again, I think it's very easy to wear. It could be a daily wear. You just smell really dapper when you wear a fragrance like this. Got to try. I'm going to link down to at least a sample for all these fragrances, but whatever I can find will be down there. That's Sartorial from Penhaligon. Up next is a fantastic 
fantastic option for a night out fragrance that has a lot of personality to it, but it's something that to most people, when they catch a whiff in the air, it's going to smell attractive. And that is because of the note of cardamom. Cardamom just smells really attractive to most people. This is Mikalef Desir Toxic. And yes, I am aware that there is a new intense flanker. It actually just came in the mail today. It's still in the box. I'm looking at it right here. I have yet to try it. So I'm curious to try it. I will be reporting about that shortly. But for now, I'm talking about this guy, which I have quite a bit of experience with. I've been enjoying this fragrance for at least a couple years now. It has this dark, fruity, warm, spicy, sweet type of freshness to it with this woody edge. The fruitiness, I think, comes from black currant. It's not overly sweet. There is an almost tart nature to this sweetness, but it's a dark sweetness, like a dark juiciness. If you can imagine the black currant or a plum or something like that, that's the type of sweetness here. It is not bright. With this fresh spicy cardamom, a little bit sweet from that, maybe some cinnamon or something like that. There's also a good bit of cannabis in here, which adds just a touch of edge, a little, little, little tiny bit of interest, of rough edges that just kind of make it maybe sexier, so to speak. It just smells like it has more depth. People call this a cousin to Leighton. I've called it that too and I would agree with that but it's like the older cousin the more experienced cousin the one that doesn't need a ton of attention but is still very magnetic this is great for dates this is great for just going out it just smells attractive I don't know how many more times I can say that Desert Toxic from Mika Left try it if you haven't up next from the house of Nishane many fantastic fragrances I could choose from them that are accessible but are undeniably niche and I'm going with Wulong Cha X one of their newest releases from the past couple years and it takes the already beautiful Oolong Cha, which I love. I have it. I almost put it in here, but I decided to go with the X just because it's a little bit newer, a little bit more contemporary, if you will. It is a green, gray, yellow smelling fragrance. I get this lemon feel. I get this green tea-like feel. It's a little bit herbal and soft and a little bit airy and fresh and musky. But the X version here is a little bit more amped up on Magnolia. There is this waxy kind of rich floral nature that is in no way powdery, which I really appreciate. It just creates a little bit more core to the scent and has some weight to it, more so than the original Wulong Cha, which is maybe a little airier. But it is not exactly the same as the original. I wouldn't call them overly redundant, which actually surprised me. I like them both. It could easily just be signature scent worthy. If you love the way this smells, it has a definitive personality to it. It could just define your olfactory presence presence in the room wherever you want to go. It just has a vibe to it that's beautiful but interesting. Wulong Cha X from Nishane. This has been a favorite of mine for many years as well. It is a fragrance that smells expensive because it is expensive, but you get what you pay for. But sample first. I'm going to link down to a discovery set or something down below. This is from Chris Collins. This is Oud Galore. And this is a classic westernized rose oud. The rose oud combo created for the lay nose or those of us who are here in the West who aren't super accustomed to rose oud. It's not super heavy but it is present the oud here is not funky or fecal or dirty or barnyardy as oud is known to be in some cases this here it's a little bit more medicinal a little bit softer and it's smoothed out and made very buttery by the use of orris root which is the root of the iris flower it just brings this smoothness it brings this richness to it but it also brings a little bit of freshness so to speak a little bit of cinnamon in here as well adding some warmth some spicy nuances and definitely that rose and oud working together it just smells rich it's smells elegant. I've worn this and had someone tell me that it smells like me, which is probably the highest compliment I feel like I've ever received from a stranger. They didn't say it smells amazing. They didn't say, oh my gosh, what is that? They said it just, it makes sense with you the way that you are in space and the way that you're speaking. And this is a person I had just met. It just works. It makes sense. And I was taken aback. I was like, wow, I'm going to remember that. And it just affirmed that there's a reason why I have such a strong affinity for this fragrance, I guess. That is Oud Galore from Chris Collins. Do check it out if you're looking for a high quality but easy to understand Oud Rose. Another one that I have also loved for several years now. This is from the House of Amarud, one of my favorite vetiver fragrances in my collection. This is called Lunar Vetiver. Beautiful full name. I love the name and it kind of speaks to the scent. There is this bright freshness, almost like you would expect from a full moon at night. You kind of get that vibe here. Pimento pepper is what creates the spice here. It is pretty hot 
and spicy when you first spray it on. It creates a very strong face to the scent, but immediately it is green, grassy, and woody, but still has a cleanliness. It has a similar vetiver presence as I get out of gray vetiver from Tom Ford, but honestly, this is like gray vetiver with more complexity, with more depth, with a little bit more nuance. As it dries down, I get a little bit of sweetness, maybe from tonka bean or vanilla. Very subtle, but it just brings the scent to life. It brings this warmth to the scent, maybe a bit of an alluring quality as it dries down on your skin. I'm talking pretty deep. Six hours plus, you might get this very subtle sweetness. You might not. I don't know. It depends on your skin. Lunar Vetiver is a wonderful, different, special, but accessible vetiver fragrance option I can easily offer to someone who's just getting into vetiver. One of my favorite fragrances from Killian. This is definitely not everyone's favorite Killian. You're going to see Angel Share a lot. You're going to see Black Phantom a lot and many others. Great fragrances. I have them. I understand why people love them. I enjoy them myself, but this one is a little bit off the beaten path. It actually predates both of those. It is an OG. It's been around since 2007. From Perfumer Sidonie Lancessaire, we have Straight to heaven. I love straight to heaven. It's weird. Honestly, it's a little odd, but I've loved it from first sniff for whatever reason. It just worked with me. This is a patchouli forward fragrance, earthy and damp, and it's drenched in rum. So there is this booziness to the patchouli. But on top of that is a little bit of vanilla and some dried fruits. And underneath is quite a bit of dry cedar wood. So it's a slightly sweet, boozy, earthy, damp, woody fragrance. And it all kind of comes together as one accord. It doesn't really change all that much on the skin. It doesn't evolve a whole lot because there's not a whole lot going on here. But what is here creates something quite unique and ultimately pretty elegant. Something you don't need to spray a lot of because it's weird. And if you put too much of something weird on, you smell even weirder. So just avoid that. I go no more than about four sprays with this. I tend to wear it in the evening time. I just want it to have this vibe, this bubble around me. It is a beautiful scent profile that I just love. It does something to me that I can't explain. It may not have the same effect on you, but if you're looking for a Killian to try that is off the beaten path, that is not what everyone is recommending, I would check out Straight to Heaven. It's the reason why it's been sold for almost 20 years now. From a relatively new house, they kind of started up in the past couple years. They're called Adamo Parfum. They have a really cool aesthetic. You can just look at the bottle and you can see, man, they are putting out something definitive here. This is their bottle style. They call this numero cuatro or number four, whatever you want to call it. And this is this beautiful oud fragrance. I get kind of an oud and chocolate feel, a little bit of a warm spice. It's dry and woody. I definitely see the color like a cocoa, like a dark brown in there. Maybe a little bit of rose, perhaps. It doesn't come off as an overly oudy fragrance, so don't be alarmed. I wouldn't call this an oud fragrance, but it is kind of the structure of the scent, but there's more going on. It's a little sweet and ambery, perhaps. It just wears elegantly. I love the way it moves through the air. You don't get all of it all at once. It's intriguing. It's something that pulls you in, but it does have presence. Something to wear on a night out a little bit more elegantly. Fall and winter dress up, maybe with a collared shirt, maybe suit and tie. Dark colors. It smells absolutely intoxicating. That is number four or numero cuatro from Adamo Parfum. This is one of those fragrances that you could wear anywhere, anytime, all year round. It just works. If you love it, this is from Ormond Jane. They call it Ormond Man. Came out in the early 2000s. Beautiful balance of uniqueness and wearability all together. It doesn't smell exactly like other things you may have smelled. It definitely doesn't smell like it's almost 20 years old. It smells completely timeless, but it is so easy to understand. It is primarily a woody, fresh fragrance. There is hemlock in there, maybe some juniper berry adding this sharp freshness to it that is not too sharp. A little bit of this almost nutty, woody sweetness. I can't really describe where that's coming from, but I've always gotten that almost like a natural sap kind of feeling, but it's just tucked inside of this slightly green, fresh, woody fragrance that smells very handsome. It's a daytime scent to me. You could wear it at night, no problem, but it has a daytime vibe, casual or a little bit more dressed up. Doesn't matter. It will work. I get moderate performance out of it, maybe six to eight hours, maybe a little bit more depending on the conditions, but it's just an easy wear and it doesn't smell run of the mill. That is Ormond Jane, Ormond Man. We've got a slight unusual pick here from Zaharoff. I don't remember the last time I included this in a video. And to be honest with you, it's one that I kind of overlooked when I first got it. George sent this over to me when it came out, I think in 2020, and I did a review on it and I've worn it a handful of times since, and I found it nice, but for some reason it just didn't stand out as something special to me. But the more I've revisited it over the years, it comes off as something actually quite special, and especially considering the DNA that it stemmed from. This is signature 
Royale, the original signature Royale. You'll see I haven't worn a whole lot of it. Again, I've been kind of neglecting it to be honest. But again, I've given it some sprays over the past couple years and just realized this is a gorgeous scent profile. Also using Magnolia, maybe a little bit of apple in there, but that Magnolia adds this kind of dense, again, almost waxy floral weightiness to the scent, not powdery. Once again, maybe some lavender, maybe some smooth, almost creamy cotton like woods in there. It smells the way it looks. There's a happy, joyful quality to the scent without being overly bright still a bit of a handsomeness to it maybe even a little bit of a tiny allure in its kind of creamy sweetness that it carries just an interesting scent profile that wears beautifully that just smells delightful i don't see anyone disliking this zaharoff signature royale and our final fragrance, again, this was in no particular order, but I love this one. This is one I can easily recommend as beautiful quality, great wearability, and just something a little bit special. This is from Casamarati from the Zerzhov line. They call this Mephisto. The Gentle Womo Flanker is beautiful. I would totally recommend that too. I just don't have it. I only have a decan of it, but I may get a bottle of it someday. It is lovely. I think I might even like it a little bit more than this, but this is beautiful stuff. Now, if you are familiar with Creed Silver Mountain Water, you will get that vibe, kind of out pine fresh almost icy green cooling quality to it it is very refreshing musky floral but in this cold fresh masculine way it's a great fragrance to wear on a hot summer day but you could also wear it a little bit more classy i would dress this up as well the muskiness it carries is just really attractive in the air i've gotten some decent compliments on this one wearing it people asking me dude what do you have on i haven't smelled anything like that so while it might not be the most unique scent profile because creed silver mountain water came first it is a different enough take on it it is not exactly like it it does have its own identity and it's just so easy to wear and just so special at least to me so i'm going to link down below to check out casamarati mephisto if you want to do so all right that's going to be it i want to know what you think of these fragrances if you've tried them let me know down in the comments and once again if you have not tried them you can try them down in the description of the video there's going to be links to bottles and samples whatever i can find it will be down there but i want to thank you so much for tuning in peace i'll see you in the next one